It was a gamble that we had no right to take with the British public. As the coronavirus pandemic continues, CBC News has in-depth coverage. This is weekday rush hour and you can tell how empty the subways still are. Efforts have been made to control the spread in the Sesame Town in Uganda. The first time in a century that the border between Victoria and New South Wales is being closed. See the headlines as they happen with breaking news alerts in the app. And get the full story with bbc.com forward slash news. Follow the story for all the latest with BBC News. This is BBC World News. I'm James Reynolds. Our top stories. Huge crowds attend Friday prayers at Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, the first time it has been used as a mosque in over 80 years, but many outside Turkey are critical. In an exclusive interview with the BBC, Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson admits that the government did not understand coronavirus at the start of the pandemic and could handle things differently. The single thing that we, we didn't see at the beginning was the extent to which it was being transmitted asymptomatically uh, from, from person to person. Uh, that wasn't clear uh, to, to us or, or to anybody. Iraq's new city for the dead in the middle of the desert. We report on the country's rising number of coronavirus victims. Beijing orders the closure of the US consulate in Chengdu and blames Washington for escalating tensions. And the Tokyo Olympics postponed by the pandemic are now one year away. But how certain is it that they will go ahead this time next year? Hello and welcome to BBC World News. In Turkey, huge crowds gathered to take part in Friday prayers at the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul for the first time in more than eight decades. But the decision to turn the UNESCO World Heritage Site back into a mosque has been criticized by religious and political leaders worldwide. It began its 1500 year history as one of the greatest churches of early Christianity. Then it became a mosque under the offices and next a museum in the early 20th century. This is President Recep Tayyip Erdogan a little earlier as he visited the site. Pope Francis has said that the move to convert the building back into a mosque has saddened him. International powers, including France and Russia, have also been critical. But President Erdogan has defended his move. He says that Turkey has exercised its sovereign right. About 1,000 people are able to attend prayers inside the building at any one time. The iconic building, as you can see, is located on the west bank of the Bosphorus, and you get to see it as you sail into the city. Paul Adams has this report. A vast crowd to witness a new chapter in Hagia Sophia's 1,500-year history. This grand cathedral turned mosque turned museum, once again a place of Muslim worship. For older conservative Turks, a moment of huge national and religious pride. Our 86 years of longing ends today. We've been waiting for the opening of Hagia Sophia for a long time. Thanks to our president and the court decision, today we are going to perform Friday prayers at Hagia Sophia. We are witnessing history today. Today is the day Hagia Sophia returns to its origin. A moment of triumph too for Turkey's president, a day to put other concerns fragile economy, political challenges, and the effects of coronavirus to one side. His supporters compare him to the Sultan who captured Constantinople in 1453 and claimed this Byzantine cathedral for Islam. To the president's critics, it's all part of a worrying trend. This is a symbolic act of, of reversing um, uh, the, the turn towards the West and, and, and secularism and establishing the fact that Turkey defends the rights of Islam um, as much as it defends its own national rights. Inside, 500 invited guests attended prayers in a vast space revered by Muslims and Christians alike. The Pope has called this moment painful, 
But Mr. Erdogan says Christians have nothing to fear. Hagia Sophia will remain open to all, he said. Byzantine mosaics depicting Jesus and the Virgin Mary, but only during prayers. In an address full of references to the country's Ottoman glories, Turkey's top Muslim cleric. Oh, water. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine. And uh, you are supposed to say something to me. How are you? Yeah, sure. I'm doing good. What is new? I'm fine. I don't know what else am I supposed to say. What is new? Just tell me what happened uh, during this week when I haven't seen mm. you. Today I passed my exam um, about technical translation and now I can be the assistant of the um, of the um, of the human who translate text. <laughs> That's interesting. So just uh, remind me, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What is your background like uh, about your, a little bit about your education, about your, the, the history of your learning English language? Just remind me a little bit. Help me to understand. Okay. Mm, I'm from Ufa. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Republic of Bashkortostan. Um, actually, it's pretty um, popular place and it's not so little um it's not so far from moscow mm, that's it okay and uh, about your education um i ended i graduated from school today um, i ended high school And uh, about your um, English learning? Mm, I passed my exam and also I passed the exam of technical translation. Because I'm I was studying at linguistic school and we are passing, we're, we've passed exam after our education. All right, so I will just try and answer. Okay. Yeah, I will let this guy go into the classroom. All right, um, that's um, uh, interesting. So you said that you you went to a linguistic school. So what is, uh, if I may ask, uh, what is the number of this school? Gymnasium number nineteen one. Okay, yeah, I know, yeah. I, I live in Park for many years, so I know mentally that's that's a very good uh, institution. I like it. Okay, very good, excellent. And uh, did you take the uh, Russian national exam? Can you repeat, please? Uh, did you take the Russian national exam in English? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay, and uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the results. <laughs> I understand, but uh, uh, my question is, I know that uh, you do not have any results yet, that's understandable, but um, the question is, um, what are your impressions? Uh, can you share a little bit about this? What do you think of the uh, exam? Um, actually, it wasn't pretty easy exam, and <laughs> it was really difficult for me, I don't know. Maybe in this year exam was not easy for other people in user because I was discussing with it with my classmates and other people and they think the same. It was not easy as in the last year, for example. Uh, but um, the speaking part is, was really easy, but um, listening and Reading was not easy. Okay, uh, do you think that you made uh, 
make many mistakes. Um, I made a couple mistake, couple mistakes uh, in the first number, uh, and uh, I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I hope that everything is gonna be fine. Uh, but I made mistakes, yeah. Okay, that I understand. That's not a big deal. So um, then, uh, how about the technical side of uh, speaking part? Mm, was it uh, comfortable for you to have this conversation with the computer? Was uh, everything was fine? Mm -hmm. um, actually, everything was um, awful <laughs> because okay. when it was my turn to uh, to speaking, uh, the computer is died. <laughs> yeah, I thought that my result um, was not um, audible, uh, not audible, yeah, audible for other people. And I thought that I'm go I, I will pass exam in the, in the 3rd August, but the result is fine. Uh, they, um, they call me and they called me and say that everything's fine. <laughs> Okay, so the guy is asking me about it. I will do a transfer. Um, okay, um, and uh, when you were asking, uh, when, you, when you were answering, given the answer uh, during this exam, uh, did you hear other people talking? Uh, people who were sitting next to you, I mean, during the speaking part. Mm, there was, mm, there were four, four other humans, other people, mm -hmm. and me. <laughs> yeah, did you, did you hear them? Um, no, because there was, um, there were, there was music, uh, and I didn't hear other people. That's good because uh, you know previous years that was the problem. Even when people were wearing the headphones, they could still hear other people talking. And that was uh, the problem. That, that's why I'm asking. Okay, um, about the pictures. What were the pictures about? Um, about number four or, or three. That doesn't matter. You can start with three. In the third exercise, um, I have chosen for number uh, number two. I'm not sure, but it was number two. It was about um, friends eating uh, was mm, friends eating hamburgers. So that's picture yeah. two, picture three. I didn't understand picture three. Picture three. Mm. Two, uh, which one? Mm, two. Okay. I don't know. I don't remember. Okay, so friends eating, and then the next picture. Mm, I don't remember. I oh, don't remember. That's fine. Um, and uh, if all the last where yeah, the last task where you had to, uh, to compare and contrast. And contrast. Uh, what was uh, it? it was about hobbies. Hobbies. Uh, it actually it was dance, dance um, types of dancing, uh, hip hop dancing, and ballet. I'll mute uh, the, the person because it's impossible to hear anything. Okay, and uh, how about uh, the uh, what was the essay about? Did you write an essay? Uh, yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, actually, it was pretty easy. It was pretty easy um, topic. Um, uh, it was um, 
uh, it's better to travel alone. That's it. It's I I to travel alone. Yeah, it's pretty short topic. Yeah, I decided to choose the this team. All right. So it's better to travel alone, correct? Yeah. Okay. So. Just tell me what you think and why it's better. To, I don't think so. I like to travel. In a I've read. I've read that firstly, it's more, it's safer. Uh, secondly, um, because you can do you can don't you can do not uh, take picture take pictures um, alone only selfies. And third plus is that um it's more fun when you with someone i've read three pluses pluses advantages mm, yeah advantages. i understand all right good um so uh we have a newcomer and uh, let's uh, ask her and uh, what uh, she would like to say so hello, Isaac. Um, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. We are doing excellent. So I just want you guys to meet each other and to, and to get to know a little bit. So you see, we have uh, Zlatan and uh, just ask each other questions, whatever you want to ask. like. Where are you from? Okay. Uh, if you okay. Please go ahead. Mm, I'm from Rush, Krasnoyarsk. Um, I said, uh, if, I'm you, if you please ask uh, Zlata questions, and Zlata will ask you. Just get to know each other. Ah, ah, okay, okay. Where are you from, Zlata? Hey, Zlata. I'm from. I'm from Ufa, Bashkortostan. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and I'm I'm from I'm from Krasnoyarsk. Do you know about this city? Yes. <laughs> mm, how old are you? I'm seventeen. Oh, me too. Did you pass the exam? Yes. <laughs> is it difficult Social... for you? Is it difficult mm, for you? The, um, Russian language was uh, difficult for me because I didn't uh, prepare for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, what about English? Did you pass the English? Yes. Mm. Because for me, Russian was was really easy. But English was really difficult for me. I don't know. <laughs> also, I take social science. So, social science was the one of mm. the. I passed this one too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, by the way, uh, how much points did you get? Mm, I mean Russian. Points? Yeah. Oh, um, Russian. Of Russian, 57. <laughs> because uh, I can't... Uh, the text was... Is the text was uh, difficult? Yes, the uh, yeah. the problem, the topic of say, yes. I don't know. I passed uh, Russian mm, uh, very well. I got <laughs> um, nine um, eighty nine points. Whoa! <laughs> Great! My congratulations. Where do you want to um, study? In which city? What country, maybe? 
Um, actually, I'm choosing between Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Kaliningrad. <laughs> Um, um, but I like Kaliningrad most of all. Mm. Mm, what's your hobbies? <laughs> <laughs> hobbies. Uh, hard to say. Um, actually, I like uh, taking pictures and also I like English and I'm trying to learn English. I'm trying to um, to study in English, um, something like that. Yeah, because mm. I really like this language and I want to uh, connect my life with this with this language. And <laughs> yeah, that's it. Cool. <clears throat> it's for me. Um... I like social science. Yes. Uh, I yeah. hate social science. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why, but um, when I was a child, I really like English. And, uh, and in uh, I forgot how it's a... Uh, you just try, you will remember, not a problem. We, we are not in a hurry, we can wait a little bit. We are listening to you that everything is just good. You will definitely remember. Выпускной class, I forgot how it's say on English. Just think a little bit. What? Think. Okay. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm because you know I'm just trying to answer the requests for uh, the password in the, for the login for the um, conference room. So that is why. Um, okay, Vlad, can can you help us? Uh, graduation class, um, high school. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I will help. What you. high high school? Yes. I I, I will help mm. you with because uh, we usually say final year. Now I final year. We are in yeah. uh, final final year. Yes, uh, and the final year I I hate English. I, I don't know why, but yes. <laughs> so okay, yeah, ladies, I you know you reminded me of uh, Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace. So. See, I, I I have to answer um, the request. Sorry about that. Just wait a second. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> what they've been, been doing. Um, okay. Yeah, I I will let them know the the password. Okay. So see, the, the young lady is uh, writing me. I'm asking her how much English do you know? Because I just want. To <laughs> I, I I just. Enough. <laughs> I, I want to be, to be sure that um, nobody with bad behavior will enter the classroom. And she said that maybe upper intermediate or even advanced. So, ladies, we are expecting an advanced lady to join us. All right. So be very careful. Um, that's, <laughs> that's um, so. Yeah, she's asking first is the password or um, I will tell you figure if I'll use the help. <laughs> All right. Um, so, as I said, that uh, Leo Tolstoy is uh, War and Peace. And uh, if you remember that maybe some big part of the book uh, was written in, in the French language. Okay. And so that means that um, why would people use the French language living in Russia? So if you remember that Pierre Pizmukhov was talking to his wife, then, and uh, she was, he was saying to her, Je vous aime. He didn't say, I love you in, in Russian. 
he said it in, in French. Why do you think he did that? Why did he speak French to his wife, saying, je, je vous aime, I, I do not know French, sorry about it. Why did, <laughs> why did he say, I love you, to his wife? What do you think? Uh, maybe because it's so romantic. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Isaac, what do you think? Mm, I think that a French language is so romantic as uh, special for um, couples. It's a language for couples, yeah, loving yeah. couples. Yeah, I, I understand. But uh, see, I was just listening to the podcast from uh, uh, the English radio station, and they, they were just investigating this um, episode in War and Peace. And what they were saying, because you know that the marriage of uh, Pierre Bezukhov to um, Ellen was an unhappy one. And so they were saying that uh, they, they tried uh, to conceal their feelings because uh, they, they, it was not true to say, I love you in Russian. It was much easier to say it in a different language. So the, uh, why I'm saying about that, that you, you girls, you ladies, you, it's much easier to talk in English because uh, in Russian, yes, yeah, we, you know, you can say something which might be very wrong, but uh, in English we can conceal a lot of things. It's just I. That is why I'm talking about Pierre Zuko. So that is why um, English is um, very helpful nowadays, as uh, French language was uh, very helpful in the beginning of the 19th century. But that's okay. So I'm um, just uh, a little correction. I think that you 100% know that uh, first of all we take an exam and if we uh, successfully uh, if we do it successfully I mean during the exam when we are taking the exam so uh, then probably we can say that we pass because to pass an exam is just like you pass the car uh, you know in the British language is overtake the car so you pass by another car uh, when you are driving in the road, if you understand, okay? So to pass a test, to pass an exam, it means that you did it successfully. But uh, you do not know about the results of the English exam. So you never, nobody knows whether you passed it or not. Let's hope that you passed. But right now you cannot say that you passed the English exam. No, you haven't passed it. You, you just took it, but uh, you will 100% know that you passed it successfully, um, maybe on August 1st or 2nd, I'm not sure where the results will be um, announced to you. So uh, we take exam, uh, we seat exam, then uh, we pass if it is successfully, and then we fail an exam. If, uh, yeah, God forbid, but that's probably can also happen. And then about the teachers, the teachers conduct the exam or administer the exam. Okay, so that's uh, how we talk about exams. All right, now um, I have a big question. As uh, always, you know, uh, I try to have uh, big questions on during the classes. Um, the big question for today is, you know, that lately we've been talking about uh, distance learning a lot. Like, uh, you know, parents uh, are talking about that, that uh, some children, they just loved that uh, during this pandemic, uh, they had to stay at home and they had to study uh, all of the subjects uh, through uh, the computer online. Other parents say, say that they hated that, and, uh, but at the same time, you know, government says that uh, they're planning to uh, introduce uh, the whole system of uh, um, education, uh, distant education, distant learning, online learning. So uh, what you guys think of it? Um, 
what is going to happen in future? Would you like to have, like, you know, the, all of the higher institutions like colleges and universities, they had their online sessions during this pandemic. So what do you guys think of uh, uh, distant learning? Just jump in and start talking. I don't like distance distance learning. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, for me, it's really hard uh, to study. And I prefer um, a sensible <laughs> contact, um, not distancing. Okay, I got um, Isaac? What would you say? I'm absolutely sure that uh, distance learning um, is the worst thing in this world because uh, I'm totally <laughs> <laughs> because I I like when I study face to face with teachers and. Uh, I can um, see the person and um, a school life and Willow's school life. It's correct? Uh, or not? Yeah, that's, that's all right. Just go ahead. I, I'm listening. Okay. And I think that uh, distance learning uh, firstly bad for a very young person who just uh, started to learn in school, study at school. Yeah, but uh, see, uh, you guys, you just uh, came to my classroom and uh, uh, it seems like you've been enjoying this uh, surrounding this this class so and at the same time you say that you hate distant learning so how how can i understand that i am uh kind of uh, trying to make uh, a little bit of distance uh, teaching and you you've been doing just a little bit of distance learning together with me so but you say at the same time that you hate it We don't have a choice. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there is no an opportunity to start to study face to face um, because mo most teachers uh, teach uh, to um, to teenagers uh, without school because. <laughs> schools are closed <laughs> okay yeah i understand all right yeah um so as uh, uh, as of me what i would say uh about distant learning of course like you said that um, same thing i prefer uh, to see like you said face to face uh, the students um and uh, of course um you know right now i even do not ask you to turn on video because uh, uh the technical um uh, technical capabilities might be very poor and you can understand that that if you just uh, turn on the video then we can lose the connection because it will need uh, lots of practice so uh that is why um you know in the real life uh, situation in the classroom, uh, when I teach uh, the kids, I can show them something, you know, and uh, I, I will see uh, their reaction. Like uh, I can uh, tell them, hey guys, this is the picture. Uh, what kind of a picture is that? And uh, they have their own pictures and they have to raise uh, the, the, the picture with a hand, let's say. And then I will see whether they understand what I'm talking about or not. But in our situation, um, you know, the technical capabilities are uh, pretty poor, what I would say. Because, uh, um, you know, I used to work for a high school and uh, 
Uh, I specifically uh, taught the uh, young uh, students like the second grade. It's around eight, nine years old. And uh, uh, when I asked them, most of them didn't have laptops and uh, they even didn't have the smartphone. Uh, they, they said that uh, for them, uh, talking with a teacher uh, online is possible only when mom uh, can, uh, comes home from uh, work and uh, lets them use your smartphone. So uh, for me, it's also not a very easy situation, but uh, it might be one of the options for you guys if you just uh, enter the university or college. So probably uh, there will be no other opportunity but uh, to have online sessions, online uh, teaching and so on. So that is why I'm asking. Okay, any other ideas? Nobody joins us, I think. And why is that? Any other ideas? And uh, see, I was thinking that you will talk and talk about that because it's uh, kind of a, the same like an essay. Um, and uh, you, you, you do not use your skills. Uh, you learn a lot of skills of how to write an essay. And uh, I, I, I just gave you the same talk topic like the nasty some people like distance learning other people do not like what's your opinion and uh, you just said one phrase and uh, that's it um, just try and use your skills which you learned at school about that come on what else can be said uh, yeah, I see that uh, you know, maybe uh, the, the, if if I ask these same questions, the parents maybe the parents will will be talking uh, a little longer. But anyway, that's okay. So uh, what I want you to do today. So first of all, um, let me just uh, uh, show you uh, the screen. So first of all, um, I want you to yeah to have a look at um uh, yeah where is that uh, i cannot find it i think it's here yeah if you can see it now uh so that's my page in uh, dk uh can you see my page just tell me i'm checking can you see yes 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 so that's, uh, it's called Emphasized English. You can see here if you just want to visit, um, you're very welcome. And uh, here also you have the feedback or your testimonials or your reviews about my classes. And if you want to write something, you are very welcome. And uh, the last thing which I want to do, uh, remind you that the class will be over um, unexpectedly because I have only 40 minutes of a free of charge classes. So uh, the, the class, our lesson, I mean, the class will be stopped absolutely unexpectedly. We just stop in and they will stop the uh, class lesson. So that is why I'm saying um, goodbye just in case that it stops unexpectedly. And uh, that's it. And now, um, back to what you know, I want to do with you today. So uh, today's topic is affirmation. And uh, if you please, uh, you know, the stuff. Uh, let's do it real quick. So uh, Zlata, will you start? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, where am I supposed to start? Uh, that's the task for word formation, uh, or you can start with the uh, um, uh, title to text. If the the Yadong cave dwellings in China. Okay, so that uh, first of all, the question about the vocabulary. Do you understand the word cave and the word dwellings? What is uh, the cave? <laughs> you can say it in Russian. Cave. Okay. Cave. cave uh, <laughs> yeah, it's very good. And uh, you know, sometimes you say about your tools, uh, it, it's got a cavern, cavern. So that's the same idea. Okay, how about dwellings? What is dwellings? 
Mm, I don't know. Um, Isaac, do you know the word dwelling? No, I don't know. Okay, that, that's not the problem. So, dwelling is a place to live, accommodation, a shelter. Uh, so, that, that's the place where people live. So, as you can understand mm -hmm. from the headline, from the title of the text, uh, we will be talking about the dwellings or places to live in China, which are located in the caves. Okay, make sense? So, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I thought, will you please uh, uh, read the first sentence? Okay. With the huge numbers of high-rise modern buildings under recent construction in Chinese main cities, it may seem... Um, mm -hmm. May seem... Beliefs? Uh, that around... Uh, 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 unbe unbelievable. Absolutely. Very good answer. Correct. Uh, finish the sentence. That around 30 million Chinese still live underground. Yeah. So, uh, questions about the vocabulary again, because the vocabulary is the most important part. High rise, high rise what is that? High rise. Can you repeat, please? High rise. Uh, it's here where my mouse, mouse is. High rise. <laughs> um, what is that? <laughs> High rise is mm. sky, skyscraper. Skyscraper. Mm -hmm. uh, like Vysoki uh, Zdanie. High rise. High rise. The modern building. Okay. So uh, you see that uh, the huge number of high rise modern buildings under recent construction in China main cities may seem unbelievable that around 30 million people, Chinese people still live underground. Okay, uh, Zlata, next sentence. But this is the case, and it's a choice, not um, unnecessary that they do so. Um, but this is the case, just, and uh, it is not. Mm -hmm. What is the word here? It is through choice, not. Unnecessary. Isaac, can you help us? In which world? You asking me? Yes. I'm asking you. I'm the teacher. <laughs> that's, that's my job to ask you. What are we doing right now? Sorry. Just ask the lot Okay. What are, what we are doing right now, Zlata? Mm, number two. Okay. But this is the case, and it is through choice, not that they do so. Necessity? Necessity. Yes, necessity. That's very correct. Necessity. Yeah, the necessity doesn't exist. But that was a good try. Yeah. I like it. Uh, <laughs> you, okay. you, you, invented, you invented a new word. Yeah. Uh, so this meeting will end in 10 minutes. Okay, it says, all right. Um, that they do so. Okay. Um, please, next. In Lurin's Plateau region, region, 90% of the mostly um, farms population live in caves, farm, mm -hmm. mostly. Mm. 
uh, I said what do you think? I think that uh, farmless. Farmless population. Mm. Farmless. Mm. Then you you will need to have an apostrophe, and uh, usually you don't have it um, in uh, other stuff because uh, then it will be like you say two signs. Usually, mm -hmm. it does they do not have it. Okay. Uh, any other versions? Just give your ideas and uh, do not be scared, do not be afraid, do not be shy. Um, I'm not going to kill you for uh, the, <laughs> the first. Okay, um, you guys give up? Do you give up? Yes, I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, sorry, what number are we doing? Uh, three. Number three? Number three, yes. yes. Uh, no. So I think that you give up, right? <laughs> no, I'm just thinking. But this is too long, um, you will fail your exam. <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, that was really easy, but this one is not. <laughs> okay, uh, let's take uh, the next one. I, I will just uh, prompt you. So, um, it's farming, farming population. That's, I, I understand uh. farming population. That's uh, not a problem. Okay, next sentence. Who's going to do it now? Please go ahead. Okay, I am. However, only 10% live in the unfair, basic, traditional type of yodon dug out of the mountain inside. So, uh, however, only 10% live uh, in the basic, traditional type of yodon. Yodon is it means uh, maybe cave, I, I don't know. Dug out of the mountainside. And I think that you understand, dug out of the mountainside, right? So that's yes. a type of a cave uh, which is um, dug out of the mountainside. So how can you use mm -hmm. the word fair? Fair. Fair. Uh, it's mean, uh, spravedlivy. Yeah, but uh, here yeah. you have, yeah, you, you have uh, a different meaning of this word, a different usage, different usage. Like it's an adverb. And uh, mm -hmm. the adverb, like, uh, you know, uh, when, when we say, uh, for example, she's rather shy, she's quite shy, she's pretty shy. The same meaning like rather, quite, you can do with the word fair. I think that you know this, uh, for example, he is quite strong or uh, he is uh, rather industrious or um, she is uh, pretty beautiful, she is pretty handsome. It's just the meaning of the words like quite and rather, you can uh, make the same word from fair, it should be an adverb. Okay. Any ideas? Mm. Very. Mm, not exactly, but very close. Zlata, do you have any ideas? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. So you see, the, problem, the, the problem with the Russian uh, exam and uh, why I, I never, you know, I, I'm an expert of the Russian exam only from, <laughs> I, 
graduated the course or to be an expert in the Russian national exam in the year 2010. So in the year 2010, I took this uh, special test for teachers. And after that, I stopped doing uh, any teaching in uh, Russian national exam. Why? Because uh, that's the problem. Uh, they give you the, uh, the tests which were put together by the Russians. And uh, I am just uh, giving you the tests which are authentically English. That's from the real English book. And so that's the problem. Uh, you can uh, do very well in the Russian test of the English language, which uh, the Russian people put together for you. But you fail it. It's real hard for you uh, when uh, you try uh, the, the test from the real English book. So that is why I stopped teaching the Russian uh, national exam and I uh, keep on teaching with the help of the uh, American or British folks. So the word here is fairly, fairly. So, however, only 10% live in the fairly basic traditional type of yadon dug out of the mountainside. And this is real English. This is not the, the Russian version of the English language. It's, this is how they speak. So just pay attention to that. Okay, next sentence. Whose turn is it, please? The remainder live in caves built into the mountainside or in the freestanding concentrate structures with use of um, valuable, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Valuable farmland, farmland and or energy. Mm, in, um, efficiently in I don't know in in our in our energy okay honest, um, yes that's very close but you you, you need to remember which suffixes we use when we want to make the negative edge but um, your idea is correct. The remainder, the meaning is the last of them, the last of the, the rest part, the rest part of them live in caves built into the mountainside or in freestanding concrete structures, which use up valuable farmland. And of course they are energy. I would say in two words, but you will have to make it one word which are energy no efficient, no efficiency for energy. Unefficient, I don't know. Uh, not exactly, but you are very close. <laughs> not on. Uh, not on, uh-huh. Unefficient, but very close. You just change one letter, you have to change one letter. Okay, guys, the time is running out. It's less than one minute. So I have to say uh, goodbye and uh, thank you for visiting with me. And uh, I'm expecting you to come back next week. Um, just, uh, you're yeah, very welcome. Uh, so what I, I ask you to change only one letter. You said change the first letter. 